Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make an oak log survival house. This is the amount of space required to make your build. Here are all of the materials that we will use throughout the build. Please do make sure that you have access to all of these. If you have made the grid, begin on the front left hand corner of it and move inwards diagonally by two. One, two. Begin by placing four stripped oak logs on top of each other. One, two, three. Four. Extend to the right by nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then up by three. One, two, three. And then across all the way to the left by nine again. Which you can, if you like, just line up with where we started or you can count that out. The next thing that we have to do is extend back all of these stripped oak logs. So this entire shape that we have here, we want to extend back by seven rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we are going to simply just do that to every single one of these blocks. I'm going to do it in the exact same way that I did it with the first row because I just think that it's a little bit easier this way. And as we are using the logs, do make sure that they are being placed in the right way. So as you can see, these are being placed horizontally across so that we get to see the end of the wood. Well, on the end. <laughs> and on the vertical sections, we want them to be placed vertically so you get the cool stripes. I think that it quite adds to the build. When it comes to the top, you actually have a decision to make. Personally, I am just going to extend across the end row of stripped oak log and then I'm going to join it and connect it to the front like this and then the rest of the top of the build I'm actually just going to fill in with glass so it's just going to act as a huge skylight and it's going to be really nice so if you like, you can just fill it in using oak logs, but my preference is to have something which will just shine the light straight through so we don't need as much artificial light, or at least during the day we don't. So now that we have this shape right here, the next thing that we are going to do is grab the stripped spruce lug, come all the way down to the beginning of the build, count backwards one, two rows, and place one, two, three spruce extending up from the ground, two glass extending across from the top, stripped spruce joining down to the ground opposite the glass, and then extending backwards by one, two, three, four rows, and then across the back of the build, we want to fill the back portion of this in with stripped spruce, and then we want to have a little window on the side, just glass, and then stripped spruce, just like this. Perfect. So we are actually missing a material which is kind of on brand for me. Hopefully I'll make sure to change it for the beginning of the video, but we need just a little bit of spruce slab. So spruce slabs are placed in front of the top and in front of the back portion of the build here. So it's, it just makes it look a little bit nicer. It just adds something to it, maybe an extra layer of depth. So now that we have done that, the next thing that we are going to do is move up a level with the stripped spruce logs. We're going to start in the corner here of the right side of the second floor of the house. And one row inwards, we want to place a vertical row of stripped spruce, three rows of glass to the left, one, two, three, and then another one on top, a row of stripped spruce to the left, 
two more glass, one and two, and then another row of stripped spruce to the left. Then coming across the back of the build, we'll have a double door, which I'm using spruce for. And then we simply just want to place one, two, three rows of stripped spruce extending back and then stripped spruce across the back of the build like this, joining vertically. So the back of the build essentially just kind of wants to be sealed up, which, I mean, we can change later on, but I, I prefer it that way personally. So this is what we have so far, which I think is a pretty cool house. We also have to invent a way to actually get up to the second story as well, which I think we'll do now. We're going to place a couple of leaves directly left of the front door, which is here, so one, two. And by the way, as we are kind of like working, working this out now, let's just replace the interior of the ground floor with oak planks and then add the doors as well. So that's where the front door is, just in case you wanted a bit of context. So in front of the oak leaves, we're going to place a couple of oak stairs, upside down ones behind them, oak stairs on top, a couple of rows of oak planks behind, so one, two, and then behind the oak planks, extending back, upside down oak stairs, and then oak stairs on top, upside down behind, oak stairs on top, and then a couple of rows of oak planks behind, just like this. So that is how we will get up and down the build, and, well, that will work perfectly. If you wanted to, you could even add, like, a little spruce fence just here on just kind of, like, the end of the platform, and you could even do the same thing here just to make it look as though it is supported, but that's up to you. So the next thing that we're going to do is extend a row of oak leaves on the back of the build across, so literally just extending just across the back of the build, onto the outer part of the grid here. And then we're going to extend the oak leaves forwards and just sitting on the edge of the grid. You'll notice that the leaves are one row shorter than the building above us. And we are going to place spruce fence on the leaves joining upwards and we're going to do it like this so the spruce fence wants to be placed one row inwards from the front and the back of the stripped oak so if that makes sense so it's kind of just set in a row I, I think it just looks a little better this way now I'm just going to get rid of these concretes here because we have to place a bit of a path and we are going to have a double wide path that leads straight to the front door but it is also going to go around to the side and towards the back. We will also place a row of spruce fence just right of this path here and then we're going to turn this little area here into farmland. So we'll need a hoe, some seeds and I'll grab a lantern as well because well a couple of lanterns here just hanging off of the side of the strip spruce will look pretty good and it'll kind of light things up. And we're going to hoe out this grass area here. And I'm going to place one row of wheat seeds and one row of beetroot seeds. This is quite a seedy place. So those will grow naturally by themselves but we can always alter that later on and then we just have a nice little patch of grass here which you, you know you can kind of like do whatever you want with maybe add a bit of water maybe just leave it as it is so with all of that complete ladies and gentlemen the next thing that we are going to do is head inside of the build and we might even need a bit of a material change because that is the outside completely done after a slight material change we can now make the inside so for the ground floor we are going to place a little crafting slash furnace station over to the left so literally just behind the left of the door a crafting table a couple of furnaces a lantern on top of one of them and then above the crafting table and first furnace a couple of oak trap doors with barrels above them for a bit of storage on the back wall here, we are going to place a one by one painting just in the center. I quite like the carrot, although it's actually not a carrot, it's a potted plant. I wouldn't have guessed that unless I'd looked it up. <laughs> so in the floor here, we are just going to have a bit of storage as well in the form of barrels. So plenty of storage, little crafting station, little cooking station or melting station, and that is the ground floor 
complete. So heading upstairs, this is where things get a little bit fancier. In the corner here, we are going to have a couple of upturned barrels. I specifically want them facing up, I don't know why. And we then want to have a double bed in front. In front of the bed, an armor stand. And then in front of that, we need to grab a few more things. So we need the smithing table, cartography table. I know some of these are a bit useless, but you know, they look good. Uh, we need the barrels once more. We'll need the lantern, the mycelium, oak trap door. Uh, we need the painting, and then it's just a bunch of decoration. So in front of the armor stand, a uh, fletching table, smithing table, cartography table. We're going to stick a barrel above one of these, a lantern above one as well. And then on this back wall here, a couple of mycelium with oak trap doors flipped down all around them. I want to have a double painting above this. It doesn't matter which one, although I really like this one. I don't know why. I think it goes with mushrooms. It's it's just a weird personal preference. I'd also stick a lantern here, by the way, in between the split of the windows on the front of the build. And then we're going to grab all of the armor, carefully trying not to put it on, with the mushrooms, flower part, and then we've got a bunch of saplings, which I can't grab all of, but I'm going to place the mushrooms in the mycelium. I think that that looks really cool. I don't know why. It just really resonates with me. And then we've got flower pot here, an oak sapling on the fletching table, outfitting the armor stand with armor, and then on top of the barrels of the bed, we are going to just grab birch sapling, throw a spruce sapling in there, and that is the room complete. Um, that, ladies and gentlemen, is the build complete, and I hope you're happy with it. And that's it. I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, please do remember to like and subscribe. Click that little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure that you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.